Hi, Bandana Grandma here in my kitchen and just outside of my parlor where the Christmas bomb has totally exploded. Uh, let's not look at that. But today in my kitchen, I am going to be canning up some beef. I'll be baking a beef stew and putting it in jars. And if I have enough, I'm also going to can up some plain beef in jars. If you'd like to see that, come on back on the other side after the intro and I'll meet you there. It's time to can up some beef stew. I have three quarts of water in my 23 quart Presto, which is the recommended amount by the manufacturer. I have all my veggies peeled, washed, chopped, diced, whatever the recipe called for. I have washed my jars in hot soapy water and rinsed them very well. They're warm. I have washed all my equipment in uh, hot soapy water and they're waiting. My lids and rings have been washed in hot soapy water and I have them just keeping warm here in a bowl of water. And we're ready to start assembling. The first thing I'm going to do is layer all the ingredients in a jar. And I'm going to start with one cup of my beef. Maybe a little more than a cup. And I'm going to put in a cup of potatoes. A quarter cup of onions. A half a cup of carrots. A quarter cup of celery. An eighth of a cup of corn and an eighth of a cup of peas. Okay, I'm making a little room in the jar. Now I'm going to add some seasonings. We are going to put in each jar a teaspoon of salt, one bay leaf, a half a teaspoon of pepper. This is a quarter teaspoon measure. One teaspoon of thyme, dried thyme, and the equivalent of one garlic clove sliced. And then I'm going to cover it with water. And again, you can use broth if you prefer. Next, we stir it around to make sure we get all the air bubbles out. Then, with a little vinegar on a clean cloth, I wipe the rim, get it impeccably clean, so nothing interferes with the seal. Put on a clean lid, screw on a clean ring, just finger tight, and into the canner it goes. Right, the lid has been examined to make sure 
that I can see through the petcock opening. This little doojiggy is loose and free. And now we put the lid on, lining up the arrows. Arrow, 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 arrow. This arrow with this arrow. And close it up tight. Turn the heat up. And I'm waiting for a steady stream of steam to come out of that petcock. Okay, this little safety valve just popped up and now this petcock is starting to put off some good steam. It's not quite a steady stream of steam yet. I don't know if I can get you to see it or not. It's still kind of wafting and it's not as white as it will be when it's a nice steady stream of steam. But once it does, I'm going to let that go for 10 minutes. And then I'll be able to put the pressure regulator on the petcock and wait for the steam to build up on, on the uh, gauge. All right, we have a steady stream of steam coming out now. So I'm going to put the timer on 10 minutes. And after that has fully steamed for 10 minutes, then I can put the pressure regulator around the petcock and wait for that needle to rise to, to uh, pressure. All right, there's the beeper. Ten minutes are up. I can now put the pressure regulator on the vent. And we'll wait for this needle to rise up to 10 pounds of pressure. I want it to stay between 10 and 12 pounds of pressure for one and a half hours or 90 minutes. That's the deal if you live at my altitude, which is almost sea level, and uh, you're using quartz and canning meat. So, now the wait goes for this to come up here. It'll probably take about five minutes or so. While I was waiting for the 10 minutes for the steam vent, I took the time to clean up my mess there, and I did the dishes. So, in my hour and a half, I'll be cleaning the rest of the kitchen, too. It's a good way to spend your time when you're held captive in your kitchen by your canner. The needle is on 10. So I am going to start the timer for 90 minutes. One hour and 30 minutes. That's how long it'll take for these to process. I've turned the heat down to where I think it likes to live to stay between 10 and 12. So I'll be monitoring this very carefully, not leaving it, making sure that needle never goes below 10 or I'd have to start the whole hour and a half over again. All right, 90 minutes is up. The uh, jars are done processing. The valve has dropped flat and the needle is back down to zero on the gauge so I can safely remove the pressure regulator. And I'll wait about five minutes and then we can open this up. All right, it's been five minutes. Now I can open the canner. You want to open it, aiming the steam away from you. It will be plenty hot in there. Then you want to give the cans, the jars, just a few minutes to uh, acclimate to the cooler air coming in. And they're very, very hot. They're bubbling. You don't want any cracking just because of the uh, difference in, in uh, air temperature. Well, let's take a look. Lift it out slowly. Looks good. Got seven quarts of beef stew. You want to try not to tip them. You don't want to tighten the rings or anything like that when you first bring them out. Just take them out and set them down. Don't mess with them. And they should start pinging.
And if you see a little residue in your canner water that looks like some of the stew or stew juices went there, that's perfectly normal. As they can, the pressure has transference and it doesn't do any harm at all. And here's the last one. Okay. Now, you just give them a few minutes, see if all of them seal. Here are the pings. And then we let them cool down on their own, not touch them. When they're all perfectly cool, you can remove the rings. Like tomorrow morning, remove the rings, wash them up with soapy water, dry them good, dry the rings, dry the jars. And then right on top the date you can and what's inside.